about to titrate these equilibrium mixtures that I set up last week um, so that I can determine how many moles of acid are in those um, solutions at the moment. But you'll remember when we set them up, we put five millilitres of hydrochloric acid in there to start with. So I'd need to first of all titrate my five millilitres of hydrochloric acid so that I can subtract that from any value I get from titrating these so I can negate the effect of the hydrochloric acid. So I've got one over here that I started to prepare. This is one molar sodium hydroxide that I'm using to titrate against my acid. I've got five millilitres of hydrochloric acid already in this conical flask and I'm using phenolphthalein as an indicator. Now I've already done one as a rough titration here so I've got a pretty good idea of what volume it should take. So I'm just doing a second one now to see if I can get concordancy. So I've recorded my start volume on my burette. You can see that I'm adding the acid while swirling the flask so it's got a good um, mixing action. I'm adding it quickly to start with and then as I get near where I think the end point is, I can slow down. So you might like to have a think about how, what volume of one molar, sodium one molar sodium hydroxide I'm going to need to neutralise five millilitres of three molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, I'm getting near the end point now. Okay, so I'm within a few centimetres cubed of the end point now, so I'm slowing it right down. It's going in a steady stream of drops now rather than um, a constant stream of liquid. I'm going to slow it down even more so that I can add it a drop at a time and have time to swirl in between. And you can see that the pink colour of the phenolphthalein is showing each time the drop of alkali hits that solution. And as I'm swirling it, it's having time to react with any acid in there that hasn't reacted yet. And remove the pink colour. I'm looking for that lasting pink. Oh, I think it's pretty close there. Let's have one more drop and see what happens. One more drop. Okay, and that's it. That's my end point. So I've recorded the volume as exactly 15.0. I'm going to titrate the equilibrium mixtures now. I've already done um, the one from uh, boiling tube one, and it used quite a lot of the sodium hydroxide, um, about, about 40, 45 centimetres cubed. So I've, I've um, filled up my burette ready for the second one now, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, because the volume of sodium hydroxide that needs to be added is quite large, and the boiling tube isn't an ideal shape for mixing. I'm going to transfer the solution from the boiling tube into a conical flask because that allows me to swirl the mixture better. I want to make sure every mole of acid is transferred from the boiling tube into my conical flask. So I'm going to use some um, water to help rinse that out. Now, this does present me a little bit of a dilemma because water is one of the things in the equilibrium mixture. So technically, by putting water in there, I'm potentially altering my equilibrium position. The thing is, though, I know it took a week for this mixture to equilibrate, so I think I'm probably pretty safe in the five minutes it's going to take me to do a titration. I don't need to worry about the equilibrium position moving much. I'm going to use phenolphthalein as my indicator. So I'll add some of that and get ready to do my titration. Okay, now I know from the um, titus that I did with the hydrochloric acid that I need to add at least 15 millilitres of sodium hydroxide to neutralise the um, the HCl that's present in this mixture anyway. So I know I'm pretty safe adding 15 ml of, of solution out of my burette really rapidly and then I need to start to watch out because at that point I'm going to be titrating against ethanoic acid that's in the mixture and I won't know exactly what quantity is there so I'll have to watch out for that pink tinge in the solution and start to be aware of when I need to slow it down. Okay so I've just got to over 16 millilitres now that I've added pretty rapidly so I can see some tinges of pink 
in my solution. So I'm going to be a little bit more cautious in how I'm adding my sodium hydroxide. So I'm watching very carefully for when I think pink tinge is not disappearing quickly enough. see it appearing there in the solution at all. Okay, so there's definitely some pink colouring forming in that solution. disappearing pretty quickly. Okay, I think we're possibly getting a bit closer to the end point now. Let me adjust this because it's a bit wobbly. Okay, so I'm slowing down the rate of addition now, so it's adding fast drops rather than a, a constant stream. pretty close to the end point. I'm going to add slow drops now. to the end point. I'm just going to add a drop at a time. And there we are. Perfect. And from my burette, I think that's difficult to read. Let's put the white tile in behind a little way. Okay. I think it's 41.25. Okay, I'll record that. I'll um, titrate all the rest of the um, mixtures and show you the results at the end. I don't think we need to see eight titrations. <laughs> okay, I'll join you again a bit later. Okay, I've finished the titrations now. So it's 10 titrations that we've done in total. The first two there that are still pink are the ones um, where I titrated just the HCl against the sodium hydroxide. The others are the equilibrium mixtures that I titrated. Now you'll notice that they started to change colour. So they're not still pink anymore. And that's because during the time it's taken me to do all these ti different titrations, and write up the data and so on, um, they've actually started to 
um, shift in terms of their equilibrium positions. So the amount that, of, of um, sodium hydroxide that I needed to add to begin with to neutralize the acid isn't correct anymore because it will have, um, the equilibrium position will have shifted in order to try to produce a little bit more acid to replace all the stuff that got used up. So it doesn't look pink anymore, except for the very last one on the end there, which is still pink. Um, now I've recorded all the data here, okay? Um, but I'm going to take a photograph of this and put it in the class notebook so you should be able to access that really easily.